Hey everyone, it's Billy from Generative Labs. What if I told you that you could deploy your own serverless API with your own custom model in just 10 minutes? In this video, I'll walk you through the process using RunPod and Automatic 11.11. To make this easy to follow, I put together a helper file. There's a link to it in the description. Let's jump in. First step in the process is to verify prerequisites. You need to have Docker installed. You also need to have Git installed. And you'll need to have downloaded your custom model to your local file system. Next, you have to clone RunPod's serverless automatic repo. To do this, we're going to open up our terminal and we're going to clone this URL. Just copy the URL from the helper file. Then you'll change directories into containers, then serverless automatic. There you'll find three files, a Docker file, a handler Python file, and a start script. The Docker file has an instruction file that builds your doc or image. The handler file has a Python code that runs the worker. The start script is the script that runs when your container starts. At least to get a basic serverless endpoint running, you don't really need to worry about the handler and will only make minor modifications to the Docker and start files. Let's edit the Docker file. The first thing you have to do is to edit the base image reference. You might keep the reference to web automatic base, but by default it uses version 4.0. As of today, the current version is actually 5.0, so you want to update it to the latest. Check RunPod's Docker hub to see what the latest version is. Look for stable diffusion, Click on Tags and look for the most current version of the web automatic base. If you're curious about the other tags, what they're used for, etc., take a look at my helper file. I describe them there. Back to the terminal. The next thing we have to change is the run command. We're going to remove this line because we don't want to fetch the model at build time. RunPod actually recommends against fetching models at build time, so I'm not really sure why they make this the default configuration but just remove this line, and what we're gonna do instead is download our model locally, then add it to the build using the docker add command. I have my model already downloaded as a checkpoint file. So our new line has the add command, our local model file name, and the path to stable diffusion's models folder. So let me take a second to show you where you can download additional models. It's sit at AI, you can browse around, Find a model you like, get information about the model, then download it. I recommend not using the download button and instead using the download links. If you expand this section out, you'll see there are actually multiple files associated with this model. A full model, a pruned model, different model formats, etc. I prefer to use the pruned model and the pickle tensor format. The pruned model is smaller and perfect for our purposes of image generation and inference. Back in our terminal, there are no other changes needed to our Docker file, so we'll save it, and we'll modify the start script. The only thing we need to modify here is the reference to the checkpoint file. We need to use the same path as we put in the Docker file. We'll leave the other attributes alone. Those indicate automatic 11.11 starts without a web UI, but runs the web API. Again, we'll leave the rest alone. Next, we have to make sure that the checkpoint file is in the current directory. At this point, we're ready to build, so we'll do a straight Docker build. This is going to take some time, so we'll pause here, and I'll see what's done. With the Docker build complete, we now have to tag it. Now we need to jump over to our container registry. I'm using Docker Hub. I'll create a new repository with the same name. Now back in the terminal, we'll do a Docker push. This is going to take some time, so I'll see you when it's finished. Alrighty, the push is complete. Back to docker.com, we can verify that everything looks good and we can see it's been pushed. We're now ready to create our serverless endpoint on RunPod. I log in with my account credentials. The process of creating the endpoint starts by creating what RunPod calls a template. You first create a template, then you create an API using that template. Navigate to serverless and click on My Templates. 
Then click New Template. Give it a name and save it. If you want to add description information, you can use the README tab. So now we have our template, and we're going to move on to create an actual serverless API using it. Click on my APIs, then on New API. Give it a name and select the template we just created. Now let me take a moment to explain the options here. First you'll see scaling type. There are two options, queue delay and request count. Request count adjusts workers according to total requests in the queue. Queue delay basically scales based on the length of wait time. I use queue delay. As it's configured currently, this means once a worker has waited for four seconds in the queue, another worker will be spawned. Below, you see the minimum number of workers is set to zero and maximum is set to three. I usually leave that, but I do bump the queue delay up to 10 and I bump the idle count up to 60. The idle count is basically how long a single worker will sit waiting for new requests. I like to set this higher despite it costing a little more, but you can configure this as it makes sense for you and your use case. You also have to choose your server profile, choosing based on performance and cost. Pick what makes sense for you and then hit create. Now, our new API is initializing. You can click on each of the workers and get a sense for where it is in the initialization process. So while it's initializing, let's set up Postman to make requests to our new API. In the helper file, I have a link to a Postman configuration that you can import. If you're unfamiliar with Postman, there are plenty of great videos covering it, so would recommend you check those out. Once you import the configuration, you will need to set the ID of the RunPod API that we just created. You'll find that in RunPod, so just copy it and come back into Postman, and under the collection variables, hit your ID into the serverless API ID field. The next thing you need is an API key. Back in RunPod, Click on Settings and scroll down to API Keys. Create a new API key and copy it. Need it for Postman, but you'll also want to store it in a secure place because you won't be able to access the key value again. RunPod doesn't store it for security reasons. Back in Postman, you need to use your API key and your request headers. Replace the string that says your token with the API key you copied from RunPod. We're now ready to use our new API. Let's look at the run request. You'll see I have a payload specifying a prompt and other parameters. I click click send. We get back a job ID and a status field showing the job is in the queue. We can now take the ID, come over to get status, paste the ID at the end of the URL and hit send. This gives us the latest status of this job. We can see this job is still in the queue. So let's jump back to run pod and we'll see how things look over there. We can see we have one worker active. It's handling this request. The GPU utilization is high, an indicator that it's generating the image. You can click on logs to get more information about the request and how the server is processing it. The GPU utilization just dropped, likely meaning the job is done. I'll go back to Postman. We'll make another request for the status again and can see it's complete. We have the base64 encoded image returned in the payload. I've actually configured Postman so you can easily visualize images right in the tool. If you use the Postman collection for my helper file, you should have this available as well. There's also a run request that can specify a callback. It's the same payload, but with an additional parameter for a callback that specifies the URL to call when the job is complete. That's it for this video. Please like and subscribe and reach out if you need any help. Be sure to check out the blog post linked in the helper file. There are some additional things documented there that might be helpful for you that I haven't covered in this video. Until the next time.